Here we are. I feel like we haven't done a weeknight non-game pod in a while. Non-after game pod. I feel like it's been a while. Or maybe it's been two weeks. I don't know. I don't remember anything. The, pod, yeah. the pods disappear into the ether and off my subconscious immediately after we do them. I was talking with friends earlier. I bet it's funny you remember you said you don't remember anything. Sometimes when I think about like anything more anything more than 17 years ago, some before I was 30, I probably have 15 total memories. <laughs> That's insane. I, 15 I have total. Yeah, from like zero to thirty. Fifteen I have, is so small. Yeah. You don't remember anything from your childhood. You don't okay. remember playing. You can, you remember fifteen fucking things from playing Little League with John Gonzalez? Yes, you do. No, no, I don't remember any of those things. I remember all I remember is Ben and Glenn Davis being really tall, and I don't remember John Gonzalez for what it's worth. Like we we were definitely in Little League at the same time, but I definitely don't remember him. Like wow. I would say, how about this from. K through eighth grade, I remember two things in school, like two do- two separate days. Once when Miss Melius in second grade made me cry because I lost all my like paper money that we were supposed to learn to count on. And in seventh grade, I remember being in music class. <laughs> All right, we're going to rank your memories. We're going to rank your <laughs> oh, memories from the first 30 years of your life. And I do remember in eighth grade when it was my CJ's first year. under 30 now, and, and you'd say a total of 15 memories from the time he's even been on this podcast. I don't remember with you. anything. I, I remember in eighth grade, this kid Josh saw. So I got there. That was my first year at Episcopal. And you had to wear, like, you know, tie and shirt or whatever. And I had a Metallica shirt on under the T-shirt, under my button down. And everybody called me a Satan worshiper for the whole year. Wow. Yeah. That's there brutal. Yeah. My one takeaway from reading uh, Dave Ruder's kayfabe book was how uh-huh. good he was at recalling childhood memories. Yeah. Unbelievable. Or, or as he thinks his childhood. Memories yeah. I mean, were. some of them, I always, I'm in a writer's room with a couple people that have written memoirs and I'm too early in the room. I was like, but you're lying, right? There's right. no way you remember that shit. <laughs> right, right. Not even close. Right. Come on. Uh, but so I think it's like the gist and some and some added details probably. But um, yeah, Dave's, Dave's, Dave has a very good memory for for that kind of thing. When I write my memoir, it's going to be 15 chapters, one for every memory. one for every memory. <laughs> Each chapter, half a page. <laughs> really <laughs> short book. Really short book. Where's my Where's my notes? Hang on start the pod but i need my notes up on my other screen oh no what's going on here why can't i put them up there there hold on man this whole screen thing here we go i'm trying did you say here we are i didn't hear it yeah i said it okay lines you promise i I promise (laughs) all right okay there we go the rice ricky sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings sports book Sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook by using promo code RTRS. I made a $50 futures bet today. I'll talk about it when we talk about DraftKings. An NBA futures bet. Mm. It's a bet that you don't think I would make, Mike. And brought to you by Cornblow and Cornblow, the official law firm of the process. Adam Kasabi, the official realtor of the process. And Surfside, iced tea and vodka, the official sponsor of the Corner 3 newsletter with Zoe and me and Mike. Sign up at rights to rickysanchez.com slash newsletter on the show today. The Sixers beat the backup heat. Well, the backup Sixers beat the backup heat. Feels pretty good. Paul George rumors have arisen right before Easter. As they always say, Paul George rises at Easter. He's a free agent this summer. Another podcaster gravel, grovels and begs for forgiveness from the Ricky. And the worst podcast of all time is released today. Hosted by J.J. Redick and LeBron James. I have isolated some clips to talk about. Stateside Ermacraft Vodka are the producers of Surfside Iced Tea and Vodka. Here we are just over a week from Philly's opening day. And at the first game at Citizens Bank Park, you'll look across the crowd. You'll see red hats. But a lot of what you'll see is that can. That signature can. Surfside Iced Tea and Vodka. Why is everybody enjoying it? Because it's great. 
100 calories, perfect amount of sweetness, official drink of Philadelphia sports, official drink of the summer, official canned cocktail of the Ricky. Surfside iced tea and vodka, lemonade iced tea and vodka, lemonade and vodka, peach tea and vodka. Get it at statesidevodka.com, but you got to be 21. There is an, an Allen Iverson jersey for you to win, a 96-97 authentic Allen Iverson jersey, thanks to our merch partners, Scheib Vintage Sports. They've got a lot of cool stuff at the site, but we will put the link in the description here for you to register. It's only for Ricky listeners. I guess there's no way to officially tell, but it's really only for us. They're giving away March 29th, so register to win by then. Without any further ado, Amos and the Chef. Welcome to the Rights Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Spike Eskin, along with a guy who has 115 memories from when he was before th- younger than 30 years old. That is one Mike Levin. And they're all about the NCAA tournament. Mm, here you go. From the late 90s to the mid 2000s. I'm fired up, man. I'm so fired up. I got Howard versus Wagner on the TV over here. Woo! Let's go. It's March. I come alive. Four days a year. The rest of the year, dead. When the entire country crowds around televisions to watch the shittiest basketball on the planet, that is... Couldn't be more more wrong. (laughs) This is the best. I love it. We're fucking... We're living for it. We're dying for it. We're texting Zoe how excited we are. God. I rue the day that fly the process was this weekend <laughs> what a horrible timing Sorry. for me but we'll still watch a lot i wish yes. i wasn't employed at this very moment but Rem- we're gonna still watch it if you're Remember, my boss on saturday on saturday we've, we've invited all the fly the process people to go where you are going to watch the games that let's is on it. saturday so let's lock in and do it I'm, I'm this is the best this is the best and the sixers going into a very tough road trip yeah uh beat a you said Backup heat, and it was really it was all the heat except for Jimmy Butler. Well, no hero, there. no hero. Yeah, well, he's more your guy anyway, and they're better without him. So <laughs> they're not. But they are. They're and, not. And uh, and they're and that's a big win. That's a big. That's a big, big, big Sixers win for a bunch of guys that played well and toughed it out and withstood a couple uh, strong heat runs. And uh, I'm really glad they won that game. That would have been bad. So I want to want to talk about a couple things from that game. I want to start it off with a voicemail about one thing we should talk about to 833 Lickface. This is Jack from New Jersey. I'm calling about the Heat game because Kelly Oubre rocks. I didn't really expect Kelly me to be a Kelly Oubre stan or a Kelly Oubre like mega fan on this on this team. I was really skeptical of him, but tonight he proved he's a winning basketball player. He proved it. He proved it. Fourth quarter, got to have some points. We're, we, are, we are making no offense happen. We're like up by two, and the man just puts his head down, drives to the basket straight at Bam, and hits a difficult, difficult layup, and then he pumps his freaking muscles, and he's like, oh, yeah. And I'm there with the I love him. He he was amazing on defense tonight. He really he really amazing defense. He had five blocks. He rocked on ball. And I, I don't know. I'm I mean, I'm not saying that Spike's gonna be a hater about this game, about this Kelly game, but I'm interested to see what you have to say about it because it's like, man, we needed him to play this well. We 
No, oh, sorry. We would not win this game if he didn't play that well. And he's been doing that for us. In the games that we've been winning, he's doing it. He's doing it. What's doing? <laughs> All right. To me, this Kelly Oubre game is painted mostly by the fact he made winning plays and he made losing plays, but they won. So it was an exciting Kelly game. There were, there were layups where he laid it up and he went to the rim and it was errant. There were missed catch and shoot threes, but I think they, they specifically in a game like this, and by the way, the new low scoring NBA, I think does help the Sixers a little bit because it increases a little bit of randomness with those low scoring games. Um, he was good in this game, but if they had lost, I would have remembered him as being horrible in this game. Like, he's a confounding player to me. I mean, certainly an imperfect player, but he, he played great. He was 10 of 19 from the field at 22 points, had 11 rebounds. I love the way he rebounds. I love the way he high points balls. The Sixers just have not had that kind of wing athlete to just go up and get a goddamn rebound in a really long time, and he does that. Five blocks is crazy. That's crazy from the wing position. I love it. He, everyone has noted this on Twitter, but to have five blocks before he had five assists. He's not going to have five assists. He had year. three assists in this game. He was so close. A couple <laughs> couple more shots go go in. I blame everybody else. I don't blame him at all. Um, yeah, I mean, he just goes to the rim, man. He just keeps going to the rim. There was one time earlier in the game, he, go, he has Duncan Robinson on him, and he doesn't even need to be fast. He sort of just like walked him down there. He's like, I'm getting to the rim, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. I'm too big. I'm too deliberate. I'm too strong. And he, have, and he has really good touch inside. He's really like, even when he doesn't dunk it, he has this little like, the ball sort of just like guides in from the front of the rim. Um, he's the only guy aside from Maxi who can actually do- draw doubles on his rim attacks. Um, and he has been looking to pass out of it a little bit more, hit, hit Maxi for a corner. He draws three. help. He doesn't draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah he draws help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, hit, hit Maxi for a corner three on one of his one of his drives. Uh, one time he goes one on four in transition. He loses the ball. <laughs> Sometimes somehow he gets it back. He looked at no one and he finishes to the rim. You know, he, he finishes over Bam a couple times. Like it's. He's just been really, really, really helpful on this team. And to play 39 minutes and, and play as well as he had at the minimum contract, it's, it, is, it is one of the best, like, it is maybe the best free agent signing of the process era, of this podcast era, era is Kelly Oubre at the minimum. It's saying a bunch of things at once. For, of course, but like <laughs> it's the fact that it's minimum yeah. what meant that the risk was always going to be mitigated and always going to be low. And the fact that they, he has been able to, he was pretty good most of the time when he was like the sixth man and they were healthy. And now that they've been completely depleted and injured, he has stepped up in ways that a lot of other guys can't obviously Tobias couldn't. And he's allowed them to survive this a little bit more than they would have if he was not on the team, if they hadn't signed him. Should they bench Tobias? Should they bench him? Like take him out of the starting lineup and have him come off the bench? Yes. Maybe. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind playing him, starting him if that's like a confidence deal or whatever, and and do uh and do like okay four minutes and then you're out and then you come back in. Should they just like, not play him? I think he should, especially when they're this injured, they should be playing him less for sure. If Melton course. and Covington were healthy, should they not play him? If Melton, Covington, and Embiid were healthy, yeah, I would. And he keeps playing like this because we've seen him be like somewhat effective. Like I don't want to ignore the fact that we've seen him be have stretches of good basketball where he is helpful in history. Yeah. In history. Yes. yes. Um, and right now it's not one of those times. And so if he keeps playing like this, I, I wouldn't mind, you know, Mobamba started, got 19 minutes. Like Tobias should, should be a similar, like if you're not producing, then you're not going to get an automatic 35. How about Mobamba sticking it to a U by having like, you know, a pretty solid five <laughs> or six minutes stretch by having, of that. By having, by having a solid stretch. Yeah, yeah he did, he did play very well. He got, a, he got a loose ball to yeah. stop a Miami transition. He hit a couple threes. Like he hit a couple threes, which always makes everything feel better. He, yep. did ha- he did try to post up Duncan Robinson and could do absolutely nothing, nothing with yep. it. <laughs> nothing at all. It was all. pretty pathetic. Not a thing. He did make a play off a short roll, found Oubre uh, cutting baseline for a dunk. That was cool. There was a... a, a uh, Ali Oop early in the game from yes, the, Kyle Lowry. I was going to give Kyle Lowry credit for that because he's the only one that has been able to unlock him somehow in that 
part of his game and and they always look cool like they're not just like little flushes they're yeah it's bomba like Completely unfurling his arms and yeah. like hanging it was it's always like a cool the 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 lowry to bomba alley-oops are always very um jolting they're not they're not soft <laughs> Um, they tried KJ Martin for a little bit, and it's just like I wish that he was like if he had his exact skill set, but he was just like the strongest player in the league. Yeah. Then I think that would, like if he had like even PJ Tucker strength or whatever. I was gonna say if then, that would just make him PJ yeah, Tucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And with like you know more ball handling ability yeah. and more more athleticism vertically and stuff, then that would be a really interesting player. But he just like it seems like he gets still he doesn't he's not sturdy enough to be as not quite good at the other stuff. Um, but yeah, I was. I'm I'm really glad that they won this game. This oh is, yeah, you know, it was their, a big their de- win. Their defense held up. You know, Miami has missed some shots, and without Jimmy and and Hero, they have limited shot creation. But um, I'll I thought take they it. I thought they contested really well. Um, I thought it, you know they held them to 42 points in the second half, which is great. Like I I really this was to me, and I've been a big Kyle Lowry fan for his whole career, but it's, but lately since he got here, I've really appreciated what he's been able to do on this team and the and what he's added to to what they've needed. And I thought this was probably the most complete Kyle Lowry game that they have, that he has played. Sure. The foul game. grifting was amazing. The driving the other team crazy was amazing. And also Maxi had a good game, but Maxi offensively in the fourth quarter, like not outstanding. And Kyle Lowry made a couple of like just <laughs> winning plays that down the stretch, like I hate, it's funny to say it, but it is just like makes a couple of winning offensive plays, draws a foul, like just fucking a true irritant. Like Pat Bev, if he was good. You know? totally. I mean, like he, he Lowry has uh, Jaime Jaquez. He's covering him in the post. Mm-hmm. Jaquez is for a rookie elite as a post player. And he forces a tough, even though he's got like six inches, seven inches on him, he forces a tough fadeaway miss. And then on the other end, same possession, he hits a catch and shoot three. And then he ends up icing the game with like a little pump fake to get Bam up on a, on biting on it in the lane. And then a little scoop finish inside. He was, he hit a couple threes, he was three or five from, from beyond uh, that. Yeah. The, my favorite play, my favorite play of the game. And there's a bunch of good plays in this game, but uh, Batum has a block on, on Rogier. Maxi makes, Maybe the best pass of his career, which was an 85 foot bounce pass to Lowry. Yeah. Um, which Lowry hit and then sort of angled his body to make sure that he would land on Caleb Martin, who and was on the down. ground and fall <laughs> on him. So good. And drew the foul, which was yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, you drift, he grifted a foul later <laughs> on um, after he blew up a, a play like a free safety, took it the other way and, and got a foul on Duncan. It just felt like he was looking, maybe, whether it's because he felt com- more comfortable playing against this team or because Tobias is out or because he just the shot was falling and then he got more confident. It just felt like he was looking for his shot more against his former team. And in that he like has his spots and his rhythms where he feels like I can go up quick with it. And sometimes where he's like not in any of those spots and he's like, this is not this is not the right moment for me. He starts to hesitate. But um, I, thought it was a, I thought it was a great Kyle Lowry game. 35 minutes out of Lowry at this stage in his career when he was bought out by... Uh, well, traded and then bought out. Traded by a playoff contender and then bought out is just like that's way more than you can expect. The fact that the fact that Lowry and Ubre, for as little as they're paying them, are be, are as integral to the team right now as they're trying to survive. Now, like they're probably going to end up in the plan still, but there's a big difference between ending up in the plan and the seven versus the eight. Like you'd rather the game be in Philly again, if it's if it's Miami or Indiana than than going somewhere else. Well, and I, if I had a bet, I would bet that they'll be in the plan. But like four through eight is still pretty compact. You know, mm-hmm. they're still not that I think they're going to make the four seed, but they're still they're three games out of the four seed or whatever, and they're they they're they're still in the six. So. You know, the the reason this is such every time that they can win a game that I looked at the schedule and said they're probably going to lose that game is great. Now, if they could avoid the back to back losses to the fucking Grizzlies and the Nets, it would make the rest of this schedule a little more tenable. And also the other thing is you had mentioned Embiid like you thought Embiid back the end of March. It does really seem like it's going to happen the first or second week of April now, which means that you don't get seven Embiid games. You probably get three. So so that's an, another thing to consider. I would love to end up out of the play-in, by the way. For sure. Fucking play um, Cleveland in the first Yeah, round. for sure. I, I also yeah. thought it was big. Like Maxi obviously had some cold stretches, and he, he finished three of 10 from three. I, I like that he got up 24 shots, mm-hmm. 30 points, 10 assists, eight rebounds. 41 minutes like I mean that's a great game like he's 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 gotten so much better man like he is continuing to get better he's finding new ways to score 
even when he's the focal point of every defensive game plan. Um, after playing like shit against the Heat on Christmas, he's now had big games against Miami and New York and Boston and Milwaukee. Some of those teams are really good defensive teams that have stymied him in the past. And this growth that he's, you know, been asked to do as he's gotten like, hey, you're, you're the n- number one guy now that Harden's not here with the ball in his hands. And also, oh, fuck, that other guy's out for most, most of the year now. So, like, go do it. Go go help us keep our heads above water. And I thought he was great. He had a, a hezzy blow-by into a scoop floater on the opposite side. That was sick. Like, uh, this is all in the first quarter. The hezzy blow-by into a scoop floater, step back mid-range, uh, pull up in the, in the mid-range, rim attack where he got fouled. Then Miami was like, well, we just can't let this guy have the ball in his hands. Like, every team goes through the same rhythm of going, like, well, we can try to make it hard on him. And then he's our entire offense for the most part. And then they go, well, we just got to get the ball out of his hands. So they start blitzing him. And I thought, I thought Batum and B-Ball and at one point Mobaba did a really nice job of getting into the Miami middle and kicking it out to shooters or cutters. I thought that was great. Um, and then at the, my, one of my favorite plays, I love seeing Maxi defense. Maxi keeps getting fucking better. Like, it's great. It's great to watch him get better at defense. What a joy it is to get to watch him play, be better at defense and how much better at defense he is, is and is getting than James Harden, who just kind of like doesn't try give a fuck whatever maxi is like the effort is there and i love it and i'm thrilled about it he blew up a dribble handoff to terry rogier and started a fast break to himself had a had a big steal on terry rogier's drive where he uses quick hands to like tap the ball out over his head like rogier's a strong guard and that is a tough those are that's, and he's fast and it's a tough play to make and and i i love maxi doing it i also want to shout out our friend sixers adam and then uh for for calling out that it seems like maxi is leading the nba in forced goal tens oh yeah he was, and he was right and then Sam Di- Di Giovanni made the did the confirmation, which is yeah, extremely 18. true. Like nineteen forced goaltends after last night, and the next highest in the whole NBA is eleven in Pascal Siakam. That is yeah. wild. Yeah, he gets that ball up so fast. He gets and, up fast and low, by the way, like yeah. um, like right above the fucking rim on the backboard. So as soon as like. As soon as he lets it go, it's on the backboard. Yeah, you know. So it's and like I don't impossible. know exactly what that means. Like, is that like an ideal like? Per, an ideal thing or if he's like but it's cool like it's a cool stat and it's 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 cool it feels right like because of how maxi plays i thought that was i thought that was great i thought it was a great sixers adam observation and we still we still love our old friend the rice and ricky sanchez podcast brought to you by Cornblow and Cornblow, the official law firm of the process i heard mike that mo bamba is going to contact Cornblow to sue andrew unterberger for slander Wow. Uh, yes. <laughs> Does Cornblow do slander? No. He is the premier. Well, I guess he would if you really needed him to. Like when I get like, falsely ac- accused of murder, I'm going to have Cornblow defend me. Like sort of like my cousin Vinny style, even though he's not, he does not like a defense attorney like that. But mm. Cornblow and Cornblow is the premier uh, personal injury law firm, boutique personal injury law firm in the Delaware Valley. You hear a lot of, I know if you listen to radio, watch TV, see billboards, you see a lot of personal injury attorneys and, and you're like, why not them? Well, why not them? Because most of them are, that's not the person you're even dealing with. What they are is referral services. Most of them, if you hear the commercials, they say they can't even practice law in the state that you're in. What is that? Cornblow and Cornblow can practice law in the state that you're in, assuming you're here. Some of the biggest medical malpractice results in all of Southeastern PA four decades of kicking ass and taking names. If you have been hurt in any way, if it is a car accident, if it is slip slip and fall, injured at work, medical malpractice, if you've been hurt, you must reach out to Cornblow. It costs you nothing. You're going to get somebody who, until it gets results for you, obviously. Like if it gets you a bunch of money, you got got to pay him. But before that, just talk to him. Doesn't cost anything. He is the one you're going to want. Somebody's going to take the time with you, explain to you, be communicative with you, and get you results. If you have been hurt, give him a call or shoot him an email. It doesn't cost you anything. 215-576-7200. Ask for Adam. You're going to get him. You're going to get the one we're talking about. Or email cornblau at cornblau and cornblau.com. K-O-R-N-B-L-A-U. Cornblau and Cornblau, the official law firm of the process. Last couple notes on the game. Yes, a great Nick Batum game. Again. Again. I love him. I How rare is it that I like this many Sixers role players? I feel like I'm always wanting more. I'm always trying to pull it out of them since, <laughs> since like, really since Covington left. And obviously, not a go-to scorer at this point in his career. 
but just makes so many plays, makes so many good plays with on defense, with his vision, with his switchability, with just like hounding guys being uh, aggressive on that end. I want him to be in any small ball five lineup. Like the fact that they had KJ out there by himself without Batum, I thought was a little was rude um, and wrong. But offensively, his passing, he flashes middle anytime that that opens up so much. Like he's just such a quick decision maker. He sets these little quick screens. Doris Burke noted one on the broadcast. Like he's just great. He's just a great, great player. I really would love for him to be here for a number of years Um, because he doesn't look he doesn't look old. He doesn't look old to me. His game doesn't look old to me at all. And hopefully he when everybody's healthy, he can play like a more reasonable like 22 to 28 minutes a game. Yeah. Um, but right now they, he's overtaxed obviously and, and not a good enough or a willing enough shooter to do that that much. But like, this is just a good, like smart, versatile role players. I'm, I'm all about it. And then a, a, a couple of nice moments for Buddy Heald, but still not, not the like takeover score that we kind of hoped. I, he just I, I doesn't really... shoot quick enough, man. Just fucking shoot. Let it fucking fly, man. Just yeah, let one it deep fly. One, one deep did. one to break a, an effective yes. heat zone that they were struggling with. Um, and he had a really nice drive through traffic after we've been kind of on him about his inability to like get by anybody with a handle. Um, but he, he had a really nice drive that he ended up uh, doing a dump off to B-ball for a, for a nice hoop, which he drew a file for. And a big, oh. big stop to three bleeding. I still, I still trust him as a kick out to a shooter. He's open. I that's going that is going to go in, and it's going to yes. go in like softly. It is but not going to. It is not a prayer. Whereas other shooters in the past, I was like, oh god, he's too open. Like Tobias, I never. I, I'm not trusting him with that. But like Buddy, it just feels like that's a that is a layup, and I mean, it's just you gotta we gotta grade him once Embiid is back. I yeah, just don't I just think he's a full player without him. My note to him is just like I. There are shots that I know he can get up, and he just like pump fakes it into a worse shot. Is is what I see like a lot of times, like threes yeah. that are wide open that I wish he would, that I wish he would take. Yeah, I mean they're they're closing out hard, and that to me that's the like maybe take another step or two back yeah. and have a little more range so that they're it's further for them to have to contest to you know like his he's tippy toes on the line a little bit. Uh, like another guy we know. It does. Guy but needs he's, space. He's, he's, he's a better shooter about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't disagree. I would. I wouldn't mind for him to have a quicker trigger, especially while they're this shorthanded. And the last thing I want to say, Haywood fucking Highsmith, man, former Sixer, former Ricky guest, former Delaware Blue Coat. And now he. I said he was player. the fifth best player on the team at that time, and he's fucking starting NBA games for the Miami Heat, and that just rocks. I love. I love. I love like. Scraping the barrel for for guys that could be somebody, and he did, and he made it, and he's playing hard, and he's great. Nice man. This is. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nice man. This him. is, by the way, that at some point it would be nice to do the blue coats thing again. That was fun. It was just fun. yeah, and you're owed a three point shooting contest. Fucking ammo to three point yeah. shooting contest. Do you hear us, blue coats? Do you hear us, Alex? Yo? Now that we've now that we've rung the bell. Yeah. Would you think we put me we on would... a goddamn jumbotron, blue coats? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is per John Hollinger of the Athletic. This is just basically about the 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 entire article is about basically about the trouble that a lot of West teams are going to have, like uh, in this off season, in the in the future. You know, Suns are in weird shape, the Lakers are in weird shape, yada yada yada. He gets the Clippers. The Clippers are deep in the tax and don't control their own first round pick through 2030. Their best players are 32, 33, and 34, and they may have no choice but to pay two of them this summer and keep trying to push this rock up the hill. Keep an eye on Paul George, by the way. Presumably, if there was a max extension sitting around for him, he would have signed it by now. I think it's fair to say a couple of cap room teams in the East are, um, quote, monitoring this. So obviously the Sixers are one of the cap room teams. We've been talking about Paul George for a while since your 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 hilarious idea that they should just trade Harden for him, uh, which would have been nice if it happened, but didn't. But we've talked about Paul George a lot. It is weird that they haven't signed him to the extension. And uh, you know, if you're going to keep two out of those three, it would make more sense, I think, to keep Harden, even though he's a big fucking loser. So. And that's Sixers, what they, that's, I, that's what they say. Yes, that's the, that's the Clippers coming line. Sixers, obviously, cap space team. The Knicks, I, I don't know if the Knicks have cap 
space, but they could certainly sign and trade sure. uh, to the Knicks. They have they have first round picks to the the Clippers a and would fit there. Clippers a a team that is as the the article mentioned bereft of first round picks. Is that the correct word? Did I use mm-hmm. bereft correctly? There we go. So I don't know. I mean, we have a little while to wait, but the 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 names of players who are, are actually free agents and do fit the bill the name the, those names it's short it's a short list especially if you think OG Ananobi is going to resign with the Knicks if you think uh, Pascal Siakam is going to resign with the Pacers then really the free agent becomes Paul George and I think there's a chance yeah there's I mean there's still other guys but yeah the Paul George you know, we've we talked about a, a couple of them on this podcast. You know, Demar Derozan is still they didn't trade for him at the deadline because because uh, Chicago didn't want to do anything, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, we were so tired. We were so tired. We didn't want to make any trades. We were too tired. Sorry, Bulls. Just so so sleepy, Chicago. Um, Paul George is just the perfect fit here, man. He's just he's just the exact kind of player you would want to put in between Maxi and Embiid. And so I think the the argument that they would want to make is that he he sees he sees that he sees that he's the ideal player there. Now he's the ideal player in a, a bunch of places. He's not, sure, this is he's not the, the kind of place. player who would fit on literally any team. Any team for sure. Yep. Um, the fact that he could, you know, in in on the Clippers, he's like the third option and third ball handler. On the Sixers, you could come up with a world where, where a lot of games he would be the first option. Mm-hmm. first ball handler yeah. because then Maxi can fly around screens. PG can run pick and roll and beat can post up and, and Paul George can, you know, cut out of it, whatever. Like he's just a really solid player, very versatile, like total five tool guy. And the hope is that he, he sees that he'd be a perfect fit here and would instantly make this Sixers one of the best teams in the East. And so you, you put Maxi, Maxi, Paul George and Embiid, and then take your pick of like three of the expiring guys that you like now Melton, who knows about his back. He'd be a perfect fit as the, at the two between those guys. I'm really upset that Melton has like no injury update whatsoever because yeah, they might end up just like shutting him down for the season, which would be a real bummer. Especially still, for a back, you know, he's still, real, young, he's still so good when you have a real back injury. That's a, it can be a yeah. problem. And, that, and, and losing him has been mitigated by how good Lowry has been on both ends. And and Ubre as well, but you know, I just Paul George is the perfect guy. The reason I've been saying it for now a year is because he's the perfect guy, and the fact that Kawhi signed his extension, and Paul George has not gotten one, tends to mean sorry that Wagner Howard is going down to the wire. Three point game, oh, ten seconds left. Seth Towns step back, kicks it out for the tie. Short, kick it out one more. Oh foul! Fouled him. Unbelievable. And that's March, baby. Wait, they didn't call the foul? Oh, I thought they called the foul. I thought they saw the ref's hand up. Oh, it's over, Wagner. I thought they fouled him. They fouled the three-point shooter. Spike, they didn't call it. That seems like a swallow your whistle moment. Anyway. no. Yeah, that's what I thought too. So Tough tough for Wagner. (laughs) Tough for Howard. Wagner moves on, plays UNC. Anyway, Paul Paul. George would just be so so perfect here. And hopefully that Daryl is doing the, doing the, uh, doing whatever behind the scenes legal tampering stuff can be done to, to make that happen because Kawhi was not given the maximum amount of money possible. And I don't think that, James you know, Harden. it seems like a hand, a handshake type of agreement that nobody's going to get more than Kawhi. And if the Sixers go, Hey Paul, we'll give you every single penny we can possibly give you, which Daryl would, which would be, I don't know what that deal is, but I assume it's like a 40 year, 200 million plus yeah. dollar deal and he'll be yeah. thir- he'll be 34 in May. So yeah. this would be the last this would be the last big money deal of of his career. And if he wants to sign a full a full max to get as much as he possibly can, like there's limited places he can do it easily. Here is a place he could do it easily. And I want it to happen. I and, I, and I've I kind of think it will. Yeah, I think there is more of a chance than we normally have is I guess what I would say on that. You know, I agree. The rights, Ricky said. Now we have a couple of really big moments coming up on the pod. First of all, another podcast grovels for our uh, our our mercy, I guess, and then uh, some clips from what I believe is the first podcast that I will 
that I've ever decided that I will continue to hate listen to. And that is JJ Reddick and LeBron James and their new podcast. The Rights Ricky Sanchez podcast is brought to you by Adam Kasabi, the official realtor of the process. Here we are. Here we are right before summer. You start thinking summer. You start thinking the beach. If you're from our area, going down the shore, everybody thinks about Jersey. I tell you no. I want you to think about Delaware. It's gotten bigger over the years. The Delaware beaches are amazing. If you want a home in the Delaware beaches. Now, look, now with people able to work from home a couple days a week, just imagine even in the fall, long weekend, you go, you work from your, your beach house on Friday, you're there all weekend, maybe work there again on Monday, don't come home till Monday night. You need a great realtor to navigate getting one of those homes. It's a tough market out there. That's why you need Adam Kasabi, the official realtor of the process. He and his team based out of Long and Foster in Bethany Beach. You want a home in Lewis. You want a home in Rehoboth, in Bethany, in Dewey. They've got it covered. All of Delaware, all of Maryland. If you want to sell a house down there too, get top dollar, you go to Kasebe, K-S-E-B-E. And if you're looking to buy a home or sell a home, you're not in Delaware, you're not in Maryland. You're like, can Kasebe help me? The answer is yes. He can't, he can't actually execute a home purchase for you. But what he can do is he's got a giant Rolodex full of realtors who all fit different needs for different people. He will talk to you. Then he will interview said realtors and he will find you the best one. The only realtor you need, Adam Kasebe, K-S-E-B-E, the official realtor of the process. Give him a call, shoot him a text. Here is his personal cell, 302-864-8643. That is 302-864-8643 or Adam at processrealtor.com. That is Adam at processrealtor.com. So this came from a, an Eagles podcast. Now, we've, we, this Eagles podcast, one of the members is in the executives league with you, the ba fantasy basketball league that I was in and that I won and, and left after winning because I had nothing left to prove. People generally give legs the, the, the credit for that one. Mm, I, all I would say about, well, first of all, they didn't give him any credit. He got zero votes for GM of the year. Zero votes that year. Zero. Regular, regular season, regular season award. But yes, zero I also votes. got zero votes when I when I won my championship. Just well, to... because a bunch of bitter motherfuckers. <laughs> and I think Legs would tell you I I provided crucial balance to Legs. I give him a lot of credit. But whatever. So they were they had mentioned you or uh, on a different pod on a different episode of this podcast, and yep. then they had not said the name of this podcast. They just said another podcast. So this came on a recent episode of said podcast. I made a trade in my fantasy hoops league a few weeks ago wow, where folks. I gave up a pick that I was not looking to give up. Uh, there's crossover listeners between this show and another show. They would know what I'm referring to. Well, well, who'd you who'd you get trade for? I trade for Zion, and I did not want to give up my second round pick. And I finally worked out an exchange that I was okay with, where I gave up my second, but I got a fourth back. The pick spread was farther apart. But anyways, uh, this is, uh, <laughs> I'm saying it because of this. I was Who'd talking. You with? I made a deal with Levin. Okay. Uh, so, um. He took you to the woodshed. Yeah, I mean, because, well, <laughs> this is what happened, okay? I said on, the, on our show a few months ago that I was in trade negotiations and I ghosted the guy. You know, I was not, I was not looking to give up what he was asking for. And then this got back to, to, to them. Oh. Uh, now, now, right here, I mean, I'll... Uh, yeah, why, said, why be so... Yeah, they uh, said I, I, I wasn't trying this. to say the name. Like, it's, it's not that at, at, at all. I've, my favorite Sixers podcast, without a doubt, is the, for the Rights to Ricky Sanchez show. Listen to it, love it, great, oh. they do great work. Okay? Editing. I have great respect for the Rights to Ricky Sanchez show. Okay, and that's what this was. All right, so this came up on the Rights This is a lot of pressure for you right now because you know that they're going to watch this. Yes. You know that they're going to have a reaction to this. So you really got to, you really have to have your T's crossed and your yeah. I's dotted. Yeah. So, so anyways, so, so the right, so they talked about it on uh, the Rights to Ricky show and they like framed it as like, I didn't want to like give them credit. It, it wasn't that at all. I was trying to be like respectful of our shows here. Mm. Right. Did they take umbrage or by the way, it, that's exactly what you were doing, but uh, continue mm. anyway, you were definitely Did he take umbrage at you ghosting him. No, nah, he, he, we joked about it over email. But anyways, let me get to the point here. Is it known around the league that that's something you're willing to do? No, nah, I'm, I'm actually very good at responding typically, but. So it was just a shot at Levin that you were doing. You were. Yeah, I, I, it, it wasn't a shot. It was just wow, like. you were sending a message. It was just like, I don't want to give up my second round pick. Like, I didn't want it. So anyways. But and, he ended up getting that second round so pick yes, off of so you. So anyways, well, the pick spread was quite, it was like a, but at the time we discussed it, I was getting like a, a sixth round pick back, right? Mm. So the pick spread made it a better, but, but, but anyways, let me get back to what it I was saying. It feels like you got out negotiated. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Thanks, Bo. <laughs> Someone in our league said, they complimented me on the trade and I said, that was tough to give up. And he's, they said, you have a chance to win this year. Okay. Worry about next year, next year. Might not be next year. Well, I think NFL teams at the deadline probably think similarly in that, like, we'll, we'll worry about April and April, right? Let's focus on making a run right now. 
And that is your point about the deadline versus making a trade right now. There we go. So glad to hear that the rights to Ricky Sanchez is his favorite Sixers podcast. That's incredible. <laughs> That's some real, uh, some real NWO stuff for me right there, Spike. <laughs> Uh, so that was Zach Berman. I like Zach. He's a, he's a good guy. He's very fun to to negotiate with. We're both both trying to get what we needed to get. And are you happy with the trade? Oh yeah, I got that second round pick, baby. You take him to the woodshed. <laughs> it's, I, I like that. Bo called it out. Uh, no, it was a, it was a, it was a fair trade. And Zach does have a chance to to win this year. I won last year and fully tanked this year. Um, and so I just needed to rebuild and retool since I had traded all of my, all of my future assets. And now we're, uh, we're, we're gearing up for a good, a good 2025. Now, one thing I did learn as you sent us this clip, you sent it to me and CJ, it sounds like you listen to podcasts on 1.5 X. That was not my friend sent, sent me that. But oh, I, I, do listen, okay. I do listen to podcasts on 1.5 X, but, but oh. I, that was sent to me. Anyone who listens to this podcast at anything other than normal speed or slower than normal, that would be fine to really bask in it. Please do not listen to the pod anymore. I think I would go to two. I would go up. <laughs> no. I would go even further for us. No. Rip through it. No. I want it to be like zapped into your brain where you just like just receive the information. You don't well, that I would any love. time on it. That I would love. Take no time at all. That would yeah. be great. Yeah. So there was a, you know, a Andrew Marchand who now writes for The Athletic, used to write for The New York Post. Hi, Andrew. Andrew released a, a tweet the other day saying that LeBron James and J.J. Redick were doing a podcast together. Some quotes from Andrew's article. The name of the podcast, by the way, is Mind the Game because they're smart. Quote from Maverick Carter, co-founder of and CEO of Uninterrupted, this is like two wine masters, sommeliers, talking about <laughs> wine. Not necessarily you or me arguing if I like Burgundy or Bordeaux better. Oh, we're reclining for this part. <laughs> what a fucking dork. And then the other one, uh, in one clip from the forthcoming podcast, Viewed by The Athletic, the setting is very casual, with the host drinking red wine and talking in great detail about how to guard a pick play. Quote, I love talking about basketball, by the way, James says at the end of the clip. Now, uh, CJ, I don't want you to play the trailer, actually. There's a, right after the quotes that I put in the thing, there's a, a clip um, underneath the quotes. That's the one that I want. I, well, while he gets that, I, yeah. so I... Did you listen I, to this? No, I've seen, I've listened to nothing. I've read nothing. All I okay. know, I know the the image that their podcast uses and that they're doing one together. I didn't even yeah. know the wine thing. Okay, the fact that that's like a highlight is, <laughs> it's it's real Tommy behavior. Um, I've always liked JJ more than you. Mm -hmm. I think his basketball analysis is good, mm -hmm. and I find him entertaining and insightful on a broadcast, and Do way better than the average uh, national broadcaster. Do you remember uh, national color commentator? Do you remember once on a podcast early when you noted that he only had white friends? <laughs> Do you, I don't. Rem I don't. I don't remember it, but I could see myself saying it. Uh, but anyway, so you were saying you that was you, that was probably as I was really warming to my to my Tommy feelings. Um, that being said, even though mm -hmm. I do like JJ, and obviously I, I've always liked watching LeBron, who hasn't? I yeah. I do think he's the best basketball player of all time. Oh no, um, he's not. well that's silly. Yeah, the idea that th that I would the like the pitch meeting as they discuss. Yeah. What this podcast would be, mm -hmm. I would rather someone have set me on fire than live inside of that meeting where they go like, "No, we just, we're just here's what we're gonna do." No, like they get excited about it it's as they get like, more basketball. fired up. No, we don't need that wine, wine, but not just wine, wine and like real, smart. real Hooper stuff. Yeah, we're s smart. I actually set a timer to see how long it would take for JJ to say basketball IQ, and it took less than 90 seconds. Well, I say basketball IQ a lot. How, like well, that. you know, I don't want to say you only have white friends, but... <laughs> 
it was really bad. Okay, before we get to it, actually, well, I, I wanted to, I said in the intro that I made a futures bet. DraftKings, the, the Rights Ricky Sanchez podcast you presented bet on this by podcast? Dra- DraftKings Sportsbook. Could, uh, do they have Do they have podcast bets? Oh, I don't know if they have podcast bets. I know they they are they are JJ supporters <laughs> DraftKings, sure. which is actually sure. really disappointing. So I made I made an NBA futures bet on an award. Would you like to guess? Now it would be out of character for me in that I would never bet on this person winning an award. Giannis MVP. No. I have two MVP bets. One is Tyrese Maxey. One is, I made it very early in the season. And one is Jalen Brunson. And I got them both at great odds, but obviously neither one's going to win. Though Brunson will get votes. Yeah. Do you want me to give you the, the yeah, award? Yeah, I think I'll need, I'll need the award, yeah. Okay. So a DraftKings Sportsbook, the award I bet on was Defensive Player of the Year. Is that Giannis? No. No, I doubled up on Giannis. Gobert? No. So Gobert's the favorite at minus right. 350. You're not a Gobert guy? No. At plus 600, Victor Wembanyama is there. Mm. Plus 600 is good odds for Wemby. The nerds are going to be dying to give him the award, even though he's on a shitty team. They'll start talking about his on-off splits and yada, yada, yada. I mean, that is... Not something to disparage. The well, fact that he's, he's on a bad team. I mean, he's on a bad team, and I wouldn't games. give it to him. But yeah. like, he's an incredible defensive player. Well, it's un- unbelievably plus difficult six hundred. I, I put fifty against. bucks down. I never put fifty bucks on futures. Uh, rarely, I would say. Yeah, you I, might need some injuries to happen, but yeah. Well, there's only one ahead of. I mean, the only, in odds wise, there's only one. It's only Gobert ahead of him. So go, and I, I just think they don't want to give Gobert another one, right? Maybe not. I mean, so I like it. DraftKings Sportsbook. I, you know I have my Magic winning the division bet, which is, which I put in before the season. I only bet on Florida teams to win their division. Oh right, and are and are they like I don't even know who's they're currently up a couple games on, on wow. Miami. And what were the odds? Let me see. Okay, I wrote it down. I'll talk about DraftKings okay. while you're looking. Hey, uh, DraftKings Sportsbook is an official sports betting partner of the NBA right now. Plus nine hundred. Oh wow, that's good. Right now, new customers bet five bucks and get one hundred fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code RTRS. That is code RTRS if you're a new customer. Bet five bucks, get one hundred fifty instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code RTRS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Uh, Got to be twenty one. See show notes for details. So, um, hmm, I'm trying to think of how to approach this thing. So I listened to the to. The first 35 minutes, it's 43 minutes. I, I started getting 43 minutes, 58 seconds, started getting nauseous. I stopped it. But a couple of things about this. Nobody actually wants this podcast. That's <laughs> the first thing. The second thing that I noticed after listening to this whole thing is they're going to be bored and running out of things to talk about after like four or five episodes. Like, Is it the kind of thing, have they announced how often they're going to be doing the podcast? Weekly. No way. My fucking dick weekly. No way. Well, and here's the other thing. Do you remember when the playoffs would start and LeBron would go into zero dark 30 mode sure, yeah. where he wouldn't even post on social media? And now through the playoffs, he'll be doing a wine drinking. Tell me how smart you are. Basketball podcast with JJ Reddick. If you're a Lakers fan and you loved Kobe and you are cheering for this guy, you should be ashamed of yourself. Like this guy does not care. Okay. Uh, the, the, there's, there are some similarities between LeBron and Doc Rivers. The lying is, <laughs> yes. is one of them. Doc has not had not learned anything new after like 1991. Yeah, and I think LeBron's age for when his brain stopped receiving <laughs> new information is like 2013. Like so, that's that's it, and so that's why Zero Dark Thirty is where, is what, where it's just like it's still gonna live right there. The entire thing is smug, self congratulatory, and condescending. The first ten minutes is JJ Redick talking to you like you're a five year old describing what plays are like it's basketball for dummies no lebron at all in the first 10 minutes i want to make sure we're on the same page with like why we're doing this right Mm -hmm. thank you um i think it like the core music has got to be what 
nothing else is, which yep. is we're celebrating the game. Yep. Right? So I think overall, like, I want it to feel comfortable, relaxed. Mm -hmm. yep. I want it to strike a very positive tone. Yep. Um, I typically rant about things. I'm going to probably rant today. Like, I, it, is, it just comes out naturally, like whatever. All right, let's do it. So there we go. He typically rants. It just comes out naturally. He wants him to feel comfortable. Look, to full disclosure, the, that Ben Simmons pilot I had was produced by LeBron's company. Yeah. So that's a that's me being all on the table. Yeah. I do think that that the 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 music and the wine <laughs> and the like set is just so overproduced. It's a podcast. Yep. All you need is a, a CJ. Yeah. You don't even need a CJ. No offense. <laughs> You could do it without a CJ. We did it without a CJ for years. I this would, is, it would, the amount, can you imagine if like LeBron was putting it out himself? He's like, how stream yard? How do I do this? It's yeah. like, okay, I'm trying to get the, are we, are we live? Do I, should I record it remotely also just to be safe? Like if he was yeah. doing that, I'd be like, hell yeah. Great. Yes. Go for it. But this figure with, it out with a full fucking camera crew and, and wait till we get to the wine part. So the music, the music is so much. The music and the wine is just like so. It's so much. So this it is doesn't have to be that much. Here's a couple of quotes from the 10 minute JJ Reddick introduction to the podcast. This is a basketball show. This is a show with the intention and purpose to celebrate the game, promote the game, explain the game. Uh, <laughs> we will be covering a number of topics, not just the NBA. NCAA, men's and women's, WNBA, FIBA. Uh, LeBron and I are two people who I would call us obsessed with the game of basketball, with this sport. You know, Mike, they're going to do topics. <laughs> they're going to have so many topics. Hang on a second. <laughs> if, we, if we just start doing topics, people are going to flip out. <laughs> they need to be warned. <laughs> the kinds of topics that we will be doing. <laughs> And then uh, here's another one. One of the things we talk about is basketball intelligence. In some ways, it's a nod to the title of the show. And we <laughs> posit the question, can you learn basketball intelligence? Can you learn and develop basketball IQ? Or is it innate? And I would argue, of course you can. Of course you can develop basketball intelligence. Here you go. Mike, what are your thoughts? Can someone be, it's, do you think someone with enough hard work could be half as smart as JJ Redick about basketball? Sure. I mean, look, I, I like, <laughs> the, do, should, should, am I going to make fun of these guys for, for doing this and, and talking about it with the level of self seriousness that they're doing, that they are? Absolutely. Yes. I do like, like actual NBA players that are not so far beyond their prime, like talking about the game. I, and trying to like let people in on like here's what I was seeing in this moment like that's that I think is pretty cool. But do you know what's sort of insulting? There's so many players already doing this. They're just well, not yeah. being so pretentious about it. Sure. Like like I, I I don't listen to any of them. Truth be told, but like Paul George and that's not I just don't listen to any basketball podcast anymore. I've listened but like, to Paul George a few times. It's it's good. And he's yeah, good. Paul George has a podcast. Like there are plenty Pat of Bev, players obviously. who fucking have podcasts. And Jeff now, Teague's is great. Now, in fairness, are they doing topics? It's hard to say. <laughs> I haven't been warned. <laughs> uh, is, is there wine? I, are there topics? Give me a heads up before you just jump into a topic. So here, CJ, this clip that was posted online, uh, you know, first JJ's like, can you develop basketball intelligence? But here's LeBron, who's also smart. Uh, CJ, could you hit that for us? I think I was born with a sports IQ. Hmm. And it could have been any sport. Writing it down. But I just think basketball was the one that I, like I was. I can I chose. And maybe I was chosen to do that as well. Listen, I gave you. <laughs> that wasn't in the real podcast. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I thought it was for a second. No. Now. I was like, now, you're throwing, going Dune in there. A couple of things. If you're just listening, J.J. Reddick was taking notes when LeBron said he was born with sports intelligence. Sports, sports IQ. IQ. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I think one of my favorite things about this, and you can hear it in when we get to some of the LeBron quotes, is you know how you said he's like a liar, like Doc, a famous liar. Yeah, and in, and, and in like small ways. 
Yeah, not, I'm, not I, in Doc has Doc lies in bigger ways. LeBron just lies and he's like, I told I I knew about this person before yes. before they knew about themselves. Well, <laughs> and my favorite LeBron one that the my favorite LeBron lie that I actually have trouble watching the getting through the entire video like I squirm the whole time is when he's holding the Malcolm X book and they ask him what his favorite part in the book is and he was like great man. <laughs> it's a great man. I didn't see I, it. I, and then the other one where the, the Italian guy asked him what his favorite part of the Godfather is. And LeBron goes, LeBron goes, he says, uh, there's so many. I just can't really pick. And the guy goes, yeah, but just like, what's the best one? <laughs> just to do it, though. Yeah. My question was was picked. So there's a there's a, the, the book thing reminded me. I think I might have said this on this podcast before, but it's it goes around writers rooms a lot and the Internet. Not that it's whatever, but the, yeah. there's a there's a Jennifer Lopez movie called The Boy Next Door. Are you familiar with it? No, I don't think so. It's it came out maybe 10 years ago or something. And uh, and she, I think, is like his teacher or something. This like younger guy. OK. And he gives her a gift. And the gift that he gives her. She grabs it. She's like a, a high school teacher, like a, you know, English teacher or something. Grabs a book, looks at it. It's a copy of the Iliad. Okay. Which is her favorite book. Normal thing for a character to, yeah. to be. <laughs> and not only is it the Iliad, it is the first edition of the Iliad, which what? was written thousands of years, <laughs> years ago. ago. <laughs> and he says, it was, she was like, this must have cost a fortune. And he goes, got it for a buck at a garage sale. And it is so funny every time. I encourage you to watch that clip. It is tremendous, um, and that that is uh, that made me think of like light, light, beautiful lies. Yeah. So after the long JJ Reddick intro, LeBron and JJ do sit down and start to talk hoops and IQ. But uh, we we do have this first. What'd you bring? Well, we're gonna start off. I brought two bottles. Uh, Champerton 2012. I brought this. This is special. My first championship year. Very special to me. So uh, it's a good vintage in Burgundy. Very, very good vintage. And then a Lynch Bosch uh, 95. I just brought that. I just feel like that's a nice little aftershock. But I'm gonna open the, the 2012 Champerton, and then we could just. Uh, that's okay. I, it's more than okay with me. <laughs> I heard you're a wine guy too. So. <laughs> Well, I, I told you this. We were originally supposed to record this first sit down mm -hmm. in New York. So, in anticipation of that, I actually brought three bottles of 89 Lair Wah, Bo de la Roche, to the office. And obviously, some things came up. We didn't make it work. So, that's a great sound, by the way. We were, we were both sound. on the same page. Yes, we were both absolutely. on the same page, absolutely. which I love. Um, so they have five bottles of wine. Are they gonna? Are they gonna fuck at the end of this? Like, what is what are they doing? And and by the, the way, the interesting thing about liking wine is that you you cannot like it quietly. No, you have right, to right. advertise it and tell everyone and brag about it. It's it's it is a weird thing. I I like you know like omelets, and I like making them, and I do a, a good job, and I can do it without talking about it all the time. <laughs> These eggs are uh, farm fresh. Yeah. Cage free. Cage free. Brown. <laughs> like, can, we, can we just do it? Just drink it. <laughs> Shut up. Who cares? <laughs> and wait, my favorite part is the very beginning. I don't know how to say this wine, but it certainly sounds like LeBron isn't totally sure that this is how you pronounce the name of the wine. Well, we're gonna I wouldn't off. be. I brought two bottles. Uh, Champatin 2012. I brought this. Champatin. It just sounds, sounds like it's I don't fake. Know. <laughs> Everyone just, it just feels, it's just like, guys, we don't have to, you can just like wine. <laughs> Uh, here is why is it so specifically like athletes loving wine and having their own wine brand, obviously James Harden yeah, and like making it their thing. It's such a strange deal. <laughs> it is such a strange thing to want to become experts in this other thing. There's so many other things and they all agreed like this is going to be the thing that we and, all, all have become experts on. And I know in the production meeting, they're like, all right, they're easing into the pod. They're drinking wine. What if we play this jazzy music like they're about to just fucking rail yeah. each other? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how you build chemistry. Yeah. So then, so then, a couple of things here. So the 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 topic of this episode is, uh, what makes a great basketball player? It's the topic, and the, he asked LeBron for the three qualities that he sees 
in a that what makes a great basketball player. Now, obviously, LeBron just names things that he thinks will make him sound smart, but the very first most important way of being a great basketball player. What are the qualities for you that make a great basketball player? Tall. Beyond just talent and skill set and size. Um, knowing the history of the game. Hmm. Come on. Knowing the history of the game, knowing the ones that came before you, knowing the ones that paved the way. <laughs> knowing the reason why you're actually <laughs> having the ability to actually live out your dream. That doesn't happen without the people that came before you. Huh. It doesn't happen without Bill Russell, you know, going through what he went through during the civil rights movement and all those things. Oscar Robert. I don't exactly know what those things are, but it's all those things. With what he had to deal with, you know, during those times. It does not happen if they're able to just be pure in who they are that allows us to now perform and do it with no care. Um, hmm. So, Mike, your thoughts that knowing the history of the game is the most crucial aspect of becoming a great basketball player. Look, while that stuff is important, obviously, <laughs> that's not number one. That can't be number one. Imagine yeah. telling, like, Anthony Edwards or LaMelo Ball, like, the before they step on the court, they have to take, like, a history quiz? Yep. They have to know, like, all the players from, like, the 50s and 60s and 70s and, and what their lives were like. That's the first thing that they need to do? <laughs> yes. That's number one? It's number one. If I'm a scout, I'm, I'm going to high school games, I'm going to AAU games, I'm watching college. The first thing I want to know is, like, <laughs> hey, 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 who's this guy know? Does he know all the players that I need him to know? Uh. Best friend gang says in the Twitch chat, uh, Shambatam, which, which is the wine. It seems like a fake wine name. It doesn't it's, seem right. Everything so, just seems like it's it's all just so like performative. For each other. For each other. They're all yeah. just like just if you talk. said, I don't know, like just talk, just have a conversation. So this It'd is. It'd be cool if they had a conversation and it was like I, less produced. I, I have, I do have a few more clips, but I think this because is. Because what we're doing is bullshit. Yes. But like they're. Big time fucking good basketball player. Actually having them have a conversation and not like they're producing something on like, you know, pardon the interruption or something I that feels so something. like segmented. Just like this is a podcast. People are already tuning in for this specific thing. They don't happen upon it. If you want to you do this is the show you want to do. And you're just Spending like all this giving, time introducing. Yeah. Everyone like performative to. quotes. Yeah. It's so odd. Just so, have a conversation about basketball. So there are a bunch Sometimes of you just get too famous and your brain and brain goes. Brain so goes there are by. a bunch. There are a bunch of quotes, cu a couple of condescending. But this I think is my favorite one. And what I want you to listen to here is JJ Redick be laughing because of what LeBron said. And LeBron, having no idea why JJ is laughing, says what he says again and again. Oh so, no! Is this a Obama situation? No, no, no. But he, so LeBron is is talking about. I think. I think he said the first thing is knowing the history of the game. The second thing is dedication or something. But this is part of That's the dedication. Awfully close to availability. You're right. Have the ability when you when it comes to discipline, it's like you have to sacrifice loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> you have to sacrifice loved ones for a long period of time <laughs> if you want to be great. It is very unfortunate. And you feel it at times. You, you know, you know the saying: if if if, the, if if it's too hot, get the hell out of the kitchen. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta get out of the kitchen because it gets hot. But you have to have a discipline. To sometimes you have to sacrifice loved ones in order to be great because they don't understand. <laughs> and and that's okay. They don't understand what it means to like. I am getting up every single day at five or six a.m. Now, first of all, this can't be number two. <laughs> Sacrifice. Where's defense? Sacrifice. Where's your jump shot? Ones. Where's court vision? Where's jumping? High? Something? Anything? Fast? Work on your ball handling. Where's any of that? Why is this? <laughs> what is this? History? And you gotta really not like your family very much. Yeah, you have to murder your family because they're too dumb to understand what you're going through right now. Oh my god. Yeah. All, again, like this stuff is part of it but like the the bullshit prompt that he had to come up with to yep. then get him to say this ah 
Good. Okay. Good, so good, good. this one, I think, is a mention of... So I, I, one thing that, that strikes me about this is they're so eager to teach people, but also have this tone that you just simply can't understand what they're talking about because, sure, sure. It, right? So the mention of, of a phrase here. So hold on. I, w- I want to talk about each of those three things uh, a little in depth because I also have three things, but the history of the game part's interesting to me because you brought up Oscar Robertson. Mm-hmm. That's his number one. And also. whether the casual fan knows this or not, Oscar Robertson sued in 1970 for free agency. Okay, so you're a casual fan. Wikipedia, Wikipedia Reddick over here is going to tell you all the things that he learned before starting this podcast. Like, what are you calling out casual fans for? Just right. talk about. Just talk. Talk about it, right? Um, here's another one. Now, I did mention basketball IQ was mentioned very, very early on, but again in JJ's uh, section. And then the third one, I think, is basketball IQ. Yeah. Basketball IQ. I have described. Nikola Jokic, I've described you as having uh, supercomputers. Like your processing speed is a little different. I put James Harden in that category. Mm-hmm. I put Luca in that category. Yeah. There's, a, there's a number of guys yeah, yeah. that have like a different processing speed. Basketball IQ. I mean, I agree with that. I agree with. I think that should be number one, probably, or at least, so, no, at least ahead of the, the textbook. So, Two more. Here is one that I really enjoy because it is basically LeBron talking about how he can't believe how dumb some of his teammates are. Um, here we go. It is interesting. Sorry, one coach. And this is, what's that? Go ahead. It is interesting because like the guys who are just role players, like Kentavious Caldwell Pope, has a high basketball IQ. Like, there's you don't have to have a high basketball IQ. Like, it's not just the five best players in the sport. Who have a high basketball? Who have like IQ. incredible touch, right? And athleticism, or whatever. It's like they only name those to do it. Like Nick Batum has a high basketball IQ, and he's not Luka Doncic or Jokic or or LeBron. It's like I don't know. It seems like they're reserving it only for like well, like the only the the ten best players and a bunch a bunch of fucking dumb idiots out there yeah. fucking <laughs> just bouncing the ball around there. I mean, they can't even see well. JJ's like you, Jokic, Luka, me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is LeBron basically just just cannot believe how stupid some of his teammates are. One coach, and this is I know you're gonna you're gonna smirk about this. <laughs> <laughs> There's guys in the NBA that if you call a play or a coach draw a play to one side of the floor, they can't switch it in their head and do it and say, let's run it to the other side. Yeah without the coach drawing on the clipboard. Yeah. Yeah. I've never understood that. And I don't know. I never understood that. So if I say we run a, we run a thumb down angle, we're running on the right side. So because I have a left-hand point guard, he wants to come middle to a strong hand. He has the ability mm. to hit the pocket pass with the left hand, has the ability to throw ahead his lefty, and also has the ability to throw back on the shake. But if I say, hey, we run a thumb down angle on the left side because now the right-hand guard coming right, I've had teammates just like, oh, what, what do you what do you mean? Coaches always every in practice we only ran it from this side. Yeah, Mike, I actually think that's cool. I, oh, I, think, that's, I, think, that's, I think that's a cool. That's I, something you wouldn't have heard about before. That's the stuff that they should be talking about. That I like. And I finally, would like him to just say the teammates' names, but he's been around a long time. He's got fucking hundreds of teammates. Nobody gets called out. So I think that's I, a that's a cool thing to hear. I don't know the context of this one. Hold on. At the time I got to the NBA, I knew how to process and think the game. It yeah. wasn't new to me. It wasn't new to right, me right, right. to think the game. You also knew what was bullshit and what and what was not bullshit. Yes. There's yeah. a lot of bullshit that gets taught in our league because our league has been feast off potential. <laughs> I have a friend who I who I love. One a, a great guy. But will occasionally just be feast off potential talking as if I'm going to understand what he's saying. Right. And I don't know right. what he means. <laughs> right. Or he's referencing a book or something that I, or some type of like philosophy that I just don't know. And we're just caught up in this moment where I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
well, you that's it. And we're just like going back and forth a while. And like, usually I'll call it out and say, I don't know what we're talking about here. Almost never. Okay. Almost never with other people, with him, I'm just, I'm just sort of like rolling with it. And we're just like, I'm, I'm like 70% of the way to what we're talking about, but yeah. I don't know. And it's something it feels like LeBron is, is doing that as well here. And JJ's like, uh huh. Uh huh. The bullshit. Yes. We're I all was, on the same page. It's just, it's people, people being vague, people already, being vague for, for, uh, for the sake of, I don't know, sounding cool or something. I already by the time I got to the NBA, I knew how to process and think the game. It wasn't. Huh. By the time he got to the NBA, he knew how to process and think the game. Yeah, and that check. I got a bunch of boxes I got to check. That one, process, <laughs> check. Think the game, check. Done. Don't worry about that. I'm thinking next pod we do a couple of rules. First of all, we settle down with some Shambatam. Shambatam. Second of all, Shambatam. something we've been missing Choo-choo out on. Shambatam. <laughs> You bring three bottles of something, I'll bring two bottles of Shambatam. You got it. CJ, have some porn music queued up. <laughs> and then, actually something that we've, we've drank on the pod before. We've actually played porn music on the pod before. But here's something that I learned from this pod that we've never done that we really should consider. I'm going to try it next pod. Topics. Oh. <laughs> is that what this rundown document is? <laughs> All this time... I've just been filling the rundown with random things I thought about yeah. all day long. Most mm. of it has nothing to do with basketball or the podcast. I'm going to start putting topics in there. That does sound helpful. Yeah. So there you go. It's called Mind the Game. It's available on YouTube. I I think watching it, so I listened to it, most of it. and then I, I, Can I just I, make a bet? Yeah. All right. So today is March 19th. Yeah. Between March 19th, 2024 and March 19th, 2025, how many podcasts do you think that they release? Mm. So I believe I know for sure that there are four recorded. Oh, wow. Banked. Okay. They've banked. Yeah. So, well, just in case the Lakers, you know, go on You know, banked is actually an NBA, a basketball term. No. Banked? Yeah. You like can where bank. you get your money? What does that have to do with basketball? Well, <laughs> the casual fans might not know this, but... <laughs> There's a backboard. I so they're gonna get bored. And while this podcast will of course get a lot of listens in the beginning because it's fucking LeBron, there's no way the juice is worth the squeeze for LeBron to sit fucking down with JJ Reddick once a week and fake <laughs> like he enjoys talking to him. Uh. So I'm gonna say they release in the next calendar year, you're saying? In the next calendar yeah. next yeah. calendar year. So not counting the, the this one, so right, they release thirteen podcasts. I'll say nine. Okay, CJ, you have a they they're they're claiming to do fifty two, right? Yeah, I'll yeah. say they'll do with both of them on the podcast. I'll say nine. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be times where it's just JJ or JJ has and someone Tommy. else to come on. Yes. Yeah, but like because, that's not going and that's not going to count because to give to give JJ credit. He obviously like wants to do podcasts and, yeah. and media. Like I, that is one thing I give him credit for. A lot of he's good at it. Yeah, he, well, you might not like him, and you're allowed to not like him, but he's yeah. definitely good at it. He he has found an audience, which means he must be good at it. I do not enjoy him at all, but yes, he 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 certainly the the statistics prove that he is. You know, I'm an eye test guy, but <laughs> yeah, the statistics would prove. But yes, CJ, I think that's a good call out that JJ won't want to let this go. So he will get a fill in now. Yeah. And then. It seems the like JJ Reddick and LeBron James podcast with JJ Reddick and Tommy. <laughs> JJ Reddick and Maverick Carter. No, Mav's busy. Oh, right. Good, good point. JJ Reddick and whoever the Sixers brass met with when they flew out to Los Angeles that one time during the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Because it wasn't Maverick Carter, it wasn't LeBron. LeBron's fourth tier yeah. guys. Maybe the maybe the <laughs> maybe the producers of, of the Ben Simmons pilot I did. Maybe, maybe Maxi, maybe Clutch just start sending their other clients. Maybe it's Maxi, Jalen Hurts. Then it's just JJ's podcast, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, well, what's the difference? How, right? Yeah, why does it what, what does he decide? This is the question I asked Eliza last week. How do you decide how does JJ know when it's a okay, this is the this is for me and LeBron's podcast versus this is me on my solo album? Right. This is a war on drugs. Yes. Romantic track. Yeah. For JJ. Well, I'm going to listen to all of them. 
So good, good I, for you, man. Yeah, I might start. You, a you have your interests just you to have, talk have, about this podcast. How many of your interests would you say are hate interests? I don't really do that anymore. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've, you know, even in the time of this podcast, I've changed a lot. Like I don't, I don't obsess with the things that I don't like anymore. You know, so just a couple things. Yeah, I mean, really, just this one. Is there do anything you have else? More, you can... Do you have more memories from when you were zero to thirty? Uh-huh. Or or things I or hate. things that you hate and are obsessed with. Right now, it's memories zero to thirty. There was a point in my life where it would have been the other thing, okay. but right now, I don't have a lot of things that I obsess. Well, and the, hate. the two obvious ones, at least for this podcast, are are JJ and, and Ben. Yeah, and the Ben thing. Would you say Denver is on there? No, they're just idiots. Like they're the easiest trolled group of people well, on the planet. Easy to troll. Not, not so. I mean, Philadelphia, very easy to troll. That's why national sports talk hosts do it all the time. But Denver, pretty easy. I mean, Denver got mad when they said, when I said I was getting Congress to get rid of home sports in Denver. Like Congress, I don't even know what Congress is. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Ah, oh, there we go. JJ hooked up with Spike's wife. Only reason for this kind of hate. No. Could be. Maybe. You know. <laughs> Has the music for it. Yeah. You got her got her all liquored up with some palambatam or whatever. <laughs> three, bo- three bottles of championship year palambatam. Champatam. <laughs> Uh, it'd be so funny if, if they were like, and I got my James Harden wines. wine. Yeah. Cause I like that. It's a red blend yep. uh, and another red, yep. which is something, something for, everyone. for everyone. We will see you this weekend at fly the process. Yep. Again, if you are coming on the trip and by the way, if you're local, uh, Joe could, if, if you're getting there yourself, Joe could still take care of you if you want to come to the, the pregame party, come to the game with us. But uh, we will see you at the different events. Check your email, check your spam, check your I just promo got, tag. I just got my tickets today, actually. Joe sent me the tickets. Yep, I got my tickets. Um, and if you're flying from Philly, I will be on the Philly flight on Friday morning. So be very tired, a little miserable, but I'll be there. There so, you go. We'll see you this weekend. And uh, and that's tough, it. Tough road trip for the Sixers. Oh yeah, so love if they won one of these LA games. So it's Phoenix, Lakers, Clippers. Who else is on the road trip? Kings. Kings. Yep. And then they come home and play the Clippers again. Yeah. Yeah. So Phoenix, Lakers, Clippers, Kings, Cavs, Cavs. So it's five. And then Toronto. So it's six. It's six straight playoff teams. So okay. Got to win some. Toronto's a playoff team. No, Toronto's is the is the one after that. Okay. So, okay. Give it to me again. Hold on. Sorry. Suns. Yep. We can, we can look at this, but I'm, I'm doing it from memory. Yep. Suns, Lakers, yep. Clippers, mm-hmm. Kings on a back to back, Clippers again, Cleveland. Cavs. Okay. Or there might be, or it might be Cavs then Clippers in the last okay. one. Both those are home. So, of those six games, you'd take two and four? I would probably take two and four. Would love, love a three, three and three. three. Yeah. Would love That's a three and three. Would love a Covington coming back for some of that. Yeah, maybe. That'd be nice. Maybe after the game, he settles in, sits in the ice bath with a little <laughs> clam batam. A little nice cold, cold bottle of red shambatam. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. Okay, all right. We'll see you this weekend. Are you done with TTP? All right. Yeah. You know, like face.